Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Gold Rush. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to uh, um, uh, mention is, uh, and I, I think I forgot to mention in the last episode, is uh, how scruffy uh, Jared is beginning to look now. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is going to be the real attempt, so let's go ahead and talk to... Talk Captain. <clears throat> Yep, uh, let's go ahead and give money. Okay. Now, um, I was hoping I'd get a, a an actual uh, failure message for choosing the young oxen, but uh, um, I don't know if or when that happens. Um, let's go ahead and buy oxen. Sure. The man says, These mature oxen are weathered, tested, and true. I am sure you will not be disappointed. I'll deliver them to your company camp before nightfall. So you got the uh, little little musical cue to tell you that that was the right choice to make. Anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh, talk Captain... Talk. Captain. There we go. Okay, so... All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it while I uh, wait for the grass to grow. I'll see you back momentarily. There we go. Your keen eye has noticed that the plains are now are growing greener every day. The mud is beginning to dry. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, speed back up. Talk, Captain. You report back to cap back to the captain to uh, back to Captain Buddy. I think that it is time to head west. Captain Buddy bellows. Okay, men. Our scout Jared has determined that it's time to break camp and head west. Let's hitch him up and move him out. It is 2,100 miles to California, but after only a few miles, your company and every other company heading west realizes that the wagons are too heavy. You begin what will be the start of a continual process, lightening the wagons. The traffic is very heavy, leaving independence. There must be hundreds of wagons, usually pulled by six to eight mules or oxen, on the trail. The trails become deeply rutted, making passage difficult. Wagon axles break, wheels fall off, wagons sink up to their axles in mud, they cannot be pulled out. They are abandoned. 45 miles down the trail, the trail forks. To the south is the Santa Fe Trail. To the north, the Oregon-California Trail. Woohoo! Oregon Trail! Very few take the southern route. It isn't long before the first Indians are encountered. The first Indians encountered are the Shawnee and the Potawatomas. Much to the surprise of most travelers, and disappointment of some, they are very friendly and helpful. Crossing the Kansas River. Apparently we, uh... Whoa. Um... There was nothing you could do. Sometimes terrible things happen. What? What happened? The dreaded disease of cholera has knocked on your door. Your misery is over. Well. I, I, I wasn't expecting that. Alright, let me, uh, <laughs> get back on the trail, hopefully without cholera this time. See you momentarily. Okay, let's see if I do better this time. Let's see if the uh, RNG does not decide to screw me over. Oops, you fall from the raft into the strong current. You are swept downstream, never to be heard from again. Well, you know, I was actually, I actually did kind of want to uh, show off a, a many ways that you can die in this game. And apparently the game has uh, decided to help me along with that. 
There was nothing you could do. It was just an accident. Yeah, see, most Sierra games, they screw you over for doing the wrong thing. Gold Rush, it screws you over just to screw you over. Thanks, game. This swift current has ended your dreams of fortune. <laughs> well, I restore. I, I saved shortly before this. Uh, well, I'd better make sure that this doesn't happen in that save, because I'll have to go back even farther. All right, be right back. Yay, I made it across the Kansas River. You are now approaching the land of the Pawnee Indians. This is the tribe of Indians that is most feared by the travelers. It is necessary to keep a keen watch at all times. Well, I guess I dodged that one. The plains team with buffalo. Herds of them stretch as far as the eye can see. Wildlife is extremely abundant. Off in the distance, you can see Kokoskia shooting the buffalo. But the traveling masses do little to preserve their surroundings as they make haste to the west. While traveling the trail, you find that those who have gone before you have left a trail of litter and garbage. Ah. <sighs> And there are no littering laws yet on the books. If there was no trail, you could have hardly noticed. You could just follow the trash. It is a sad sight. Also along the way, you find discouraged travelers heading back home in their wagons. Our first major milestone is Fort Kearney. It was recently built by the U.S. Army to attempt to keep peace between the Pawnee and Sioux Indians. Travelers, travelers look forward to Fort Kearney for various reasons. Some just want a place to mail letters. Others are interested in how many others have passed before them. Leaders want information on the condition of the trail ahead. The trail is wide and easy to traverse. The Platte River provides an ample supply of water. Between Fort Kearney and Fort Laramie, the company should average 17 miles per day. The upward slope is so gentle that the animals barely feel the grade. Discarding those unnecessary items in Fort Kearney really paid off. The captain advises the rest of the company that this will be the easiest part of your trip, so you'd better enjoy it. I think I'm going to go ahead and save it. Just in case. I'm not sure when it generates the numbers for stuff to happen, but uh, we'll play it safe. Due to the lack of wood to burn for fires, the common fuel substitute is buffalo chips. Mmm, buffalo chips. I like barbecue flavor. They burn well if they are dry. If they are damp, they smoke a lot. If they are wet, they are next to fireproof. One of the main obstacles between you and Fort Laramie is the crossing of the South Platte River. What makes this crossing so difficult is that the riverbed is like quicksand. The trail ahead will make the company will take the company by the most prominent landmarks of the trek, and also of the west. Ash Hollow. I guess I didn't sink into the, uh... I don't remember that from the or from Oregon Trail. I guess I didn't sink into the quicksand. Courthouse Rock. Chimney Rock. All along the way, wagons have been getting lighter, but climbing the gentle slopes of the North Platte, your ca captain finds it necessary to lighten the load even more. The captain also takes note of the need to increase the care given to the animal teams. There is much tough terrain ahead. Fort Laramie is another military station along the way that weary travelers long to reach. Once they arrive, many meet with great disappointment. They are unable to acquire many of the articles they desperately need, such as fresh animals to replace those that have died. Along the way are those that will not last much longer. You could have all the money in the world, and it, and it would be useless. They just aren't available. And on to the next leg of the journey. Leaving Fort Laramie, the scenery changes abruptly. From the gentle slopes of the plain, you are now traveling in the sandy, steep trails leading into the hills called the Black Hills because of the dense growth of juniper and pine. It is now obvious that many wagons on the trail are still extremely overloaded, and they have been abandoning all unnecessary items in mass quantities. Abandoned articles consisting of bacon, mmm, bacon, sugar, mmm, sugar, 
Camp equipment, cooking utensils, clothes, household furniture, stoves, gridirons, carpenter stools, blacksmith anvils, crowbars, drills, augers, gold washers, chisels, axes, trunks, spades, plows, large grindstones, baking ovens, kegs, and barrels are everywhere. One company once in the Black Hills finally discarded an entire sawmill that they planned to operate in California. Anything of any value that was discarded was usually ruined in some way so that so that successive travelers would not be able to use the item. As for your company, the captain orders that every item that isn't essential to the trip must be discarded, no matter how small. Fortunately for you, the solid gold coin you brought with you from Brooklyn was in your pocket, so you still have that. The letter from your long-lost brother Jake was in your hip pocket, along with the gold flake under the stamp, so that is still with you. Your family photo fits in your pocket, so that isn't discarded. The company decides to allow you to keep the Bible, just in case someone needs it later. Everything else is thrown from the wagon beside the trail. So in other words, if you'd brought anything other than these items with you, because you could, you could have purchased a few things in uh, um, Brooklyn, yeah, they'd be gone. The only way to cross the North Platte River is by ferry. The line of wagons waiting to cross the river sometimes reaches 20 miles in length. Impatient companies cut down trees and make their own rafts, rafts for, the wag for their wagons. Let's go ahead and uh, throw down a quick save here. I'm going to go over temp 4 again. The scenery changes once again. The landscape is barren and dotted with sagebrush. This desert-like region has a few widely scattered ponds, most of which are poisonous pools of alkaline water. It is a gruesome sight to see the result of one of your animals partaking of the poison. Surrounding these al alkaline ponds, the sages are outnumbered only by animal carcasses. It's a welcome relief to pass from the alkaline territory into the region of the Sweetwater River, where the water is just that. Sweet! Oh, cool, we can make potions of sweet water? It's water that stems directly from the Abzu? Awesome. At the west end of the Sweetwater Valley, the trail crosses crossed a broad plateau to the south to South Pass, the halfway point of your cross country trek. Short break from the, te the seemingly never ending toil of crossing the country is taken at South Pass to celebrate reaching the halfway point of your journey, which coincides with the Continental Divide. You are now on the Pacific side of the Rockies. Woohoo! Excuse me. Your wagon train is now entering an arid stretch of land. It will be 50 miles before you or the animals will be able to taste the refreshing cool water of the Green River. Every container is filled to the brim with the life-giving water that will be so valuable for the next few days. Bad water. Very little water. The trail across this desolate wasteland is strewn with dead oxen. The animals, as well as you, are parched and desperately in need of water. The captain bellows a command... To the animal team, and the uh, and the animal team comes to a halt. Okay, I have you have to be real fast here. You're at the top of the steep hill overlooking the Green River. Oops. Let's go ahead and save it on another slot. Actually, let's go ahead and, uh, the wagon begins to move, so you jump on board to avoid the long walk down the steep hill. But the only reason the wagon is moving is because the animals are very, very thirsty. The animals give it everything they've got to get to the water as quickly as possible, and they are taking you with them. Oh no, I didn't do it in time. Ah. It is no easy chore maneuvering down these steep grades. Well, shucks. I think with that, we'll uh, go ahead and end the video. It's always good to end these end Sierra games uh, um, on a death. So we'll see you in the next episode.